While this doesn't exactly count as a sea monster, it should be a warning to all of those who want to swim in lakes down south that there are more things in the water that are dangerous and want to hurt you. During that summer, we spent a lot of time going all around Texas visiting different lakes, different parks, doing all sorts of outdoor recreational stuff with my family. In those two months alone we spent down there, gosh, we probably visited at least 17 different lakes, so I can't exactly remember where this one was. I want to say it was outside of Houston, but I could be wrong on that. Maybe closer to Dallas. Well, 13 year old me got that bright idea that on this day, I should go out paddle boarding all the way to see if I can make it towards the middle of the lake, which keep in mind this is a rather large lake. I don't know how many feet it was across or anything like that, but it wasn't gigantic. I mean, it wasn't like it was a mile across or anything, but you could see the other side of the lake, but it did take a little bit to get out to. So brave 13 year old me got my life jacket on because at the time I wasn't the best swimmer. So thinking back, I'm kind of shocked by how brave I was and how ambitious I was, but I wasn't letting any of that stop me from achieving my goal. So like I said, I got my life jacket on, got on the paddle board and got my paddle. And that's when I began my journey to see if I can make it as far as I could across the lake. In my head at the time, I think I just wanted to be able to reach the middle where I believed it was the deepest, but I was hoping that maybe I could reach all the way to the other end of the lake on the opposite shore, just to try and impress my family. Because you know, that's kind of how 13 year olds can be sometimes. It was maybe five, 10 minutes in, and I remember thinking how hot the beating sun was then. You gotta understand that if you've never been to Texas, not only is it extremely humid in certain parts, but man, it gets hot. And as I'm paddle boarding, I'm also trying to maintain my balance because I don't wanna capsize my little paddle board. Even though life jackets will keep you from drowning, I kinda had a false sense of security. I remember paddling as hard and as fast as I can, trying to get to that middle part of the lake, just to see if I can do it. But I remember that right before I got to the middle, I looked off over to my right or my left, I can't remember, and I saw a large, long, dark shape start to come closer to the surface. Now, at the time, I was terrified of fish, for whatever weird reason, I don't remember why, but this scared me, so I started to paddle double time and try to move even faster. This shape was getting closer and closer to my paddleboard and getting closer to the surface. As it got within just a few feet from the surface, I had made out to be a long, slender fish, probably about nine feet long, much longer and taller than I, which is what terrified me. It was silver with red streaks all along its body. It had a long snout. I had never seen a fish like that in my life, and I thought it was gonna bite onto me and pull me deep under the water and kill me. So somehow in my panic, I managed to turn around the paddleboard completely, 180 degrees, and start going back towards my family. I don't know if it was as I was turning around or right after I just turned around, but in my panic, I completely lost balance on the board. And as you guess, fell right off into the water, right over where this thing was swimming. I don't know if I could accurately describe to you what it's like to be just feet away from a large fish, about twice the size of you, with what looks like to be huge teeth. So I was freaking out, and of course, because the way the paddleboard was positioned, I was having a really hard time pulling myself back onto it. My family from the shoreline was yelling at me, kind of getting concerned. Of course, I was screaming and freaking out, yelling that there was a large fish coming to eat me. Even in the chaos, I managed to pull myself back up onto the paddleboard and start swimming with my hands all the way back to the shoreline where my family was. I have no idea what happened to my paddle. I wasn't responsible at the time and I did not keep it tight around my ankle like most people do. I paddled hard with adrenaline pumping through me, just using my hands, dog paddling, while laying on my stomach on the paddleboard. I felt lucky to be alive, and whatever this large fish was, was swimming right along with me, almost under my board, and I could see its shadow, and sometimes it would ascend really close to the surface, and then back down just a little ways, just so I couldn't see it. I don't think I had ever been so scared in my life. I was terrified this thing was going to get me, even though after I fell in the water, and about the minute or two it took for me to get back up on my board, it never touched me or tried to bite me. 
in the moment. I didn't even think about that or consider any other details about what was going on. I got back to water that was shallow enough that it came right up to about my shins or mid-thigh. I jumped off the board and ran up to the shore and just collapsed on the ground, partially crying, partially shaking, and I kept pointing out to the lake, saying that there's something in the water. It was huge. Well, I'm lucky that at the time, my dad and uncles were all very experienced fishermen. I explained to them what happened, and I told them what I saw and what the fish looked like. My dad just kneels down next to me and says, Son, what you saw out there, those are called alligator gar. That's when he explained to me that they really don't pose much of a threat, if at all, and the fish was probably just curious by the paddleboard and me. That was the first day that I learned about alligator gar and what they are, because before then I never even heard of such a fish. The entire south seems to be crawling with creatures that live in the water that make it dangerous to even live. Take water moccasins, for example, or alligators, or in my case, alligator gar, and even though they're not dangerous per se, they still look like they have the potential to really make you have a bad day. My findings, although disturbing, lead to more evidence of large alpha predators existing in the ocean. This was back in March of 1988. I was on one of the southern beaches in Maui. It was very early in the morning, and you could see it clear as day, but a dead whale had washed up on shore. I don't exactly know how common it is for a whale to wash up on shore when they're dead. Usually, they sink to the bottom. I don't know the exact reason for them floating onto shore but I found this one. It looked to be a smaller whale, like it was possibly a juvenile, and I'm no expert on whales, so I couldn't tell you the breed or the type, but it's whatever whale is probably native to this area of the world. Whatever killed it, well, it must have killed it somewhat recently, because there was only about half of this whale left intact. Standing there, looking at the cadaver of this thing, this whale had huge chunks of meat bitten out of it, I know sharks and other large predators of the ocean eat on whales, but to what degree, I'm not sure. But these were very large chunks. I'm talking five to six feet huge chunks. Chunks as big as me, bitten and ripped out of this whale. Whatever had killed this thing, had either bitten this thing almost in half, or had just taken a few big chunks out of it, and left what was the upper half of the whale. Either way, it left me spooked and terrified me, to know that something that big exists in the water that eats meat. I immediately thought of a great white shark, but I don't even know if great white sharks inhibit this part of the ocean, let alone eat whales like this. And I know great white sharks get big. To what length, I don't know. But the size of bites taken out of this thing, it just didn't really feel like a great white shark to me. I felt the whole thing just to be very strange and disturbing. I've gone to Hawaii and Maui specifically many, many times since then and have spent many mornings, early mornings, on the beach and have never seen such a sight like that. I have seen other dead animals washed up on shore, like dolphins for one, or even small sharks and other various animals, but none the size of a whale with massive chunks of meat bitten and taken right out of it. I guess if you thought about it, if whales come in, and I know they're very frequent around the Maui Hawaiian area. Could that potentially draw on a large shark or maybe a large alpha predator to feed? I don't know. It definitely makes me not want to go boating out on the ocean, just in the fear that I would see something that I wouldn't want to see, like one of these creatures. Before sending you this, I sat down and listened to some of your other sea monster story videos. And while I don't think I had any of those kind of sightings or experiences, this all leads me to believe that there's something larger out there in the waters that we don't know about that is probably eating on these whales. Maybe it's just my creative imagination, morbidly and sadistically wanting there to be some sort of mega 60, 70 foot long shark eating whales. But then again, I don't know. The ocean holds so many secrets that we don't know about. I guess the possibility of something like this could really be out there. Even more so here in the South Pacific where the deepest part of the ocean is in the entire world. Anyway, I'm not sure if I stumbled onto something extraordinary or if this was just nature taking its course. Either way, I thought you'd find it interesting and it certainly makes your imagination run wild.